What? Starting the recording. Starting the stream. Going live. And we're live here on Facebook. I'd like to welcome those listening in podcast land. And also I'd like to buddy, welcome my buddy Rich. Rich, how you doing? I'm doing good on this Friday afternoon. It's the earliest show that we have ever done. Not true. We've Friday. done Thursday shows. Oh, on a Friday. We have yes. done it on a Friday. For a Friday. This For is the Friday. earliest Correct. show we've ever done. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you got off early. I, uh, I'm i on my last day of paternity leave, so wish Danielle luck for the next few weeks as she's finally finishing recovering and uh, getting ready for, you know, being solo. We, we have, My folks are on their way up, like, right now uh, to uh, to help out, so that'll be helpful. So, yeah. Rich? Sorry, Mike. So, so, so was, was it a good last week of, of paternity leave, or are you... You wish she was longer, or are you ready to get back to work? All of the above. Okay. It was great. A little bit of both. I got, it's fair. I got some awesome time with my, son, with my son. I got some awesome time with my daughter. I got some awesome time with my wife. Uh, we are, like, things are going well. Um, I miss work. I do, I personally enjoy working, and I miss work a, a bunch, and I miss the people there. I miss interaction, and I miss all that. Um, the last 48 hours haven't been great. Um, I've been, was significantly under the weather, uh, lost so far 12 pounds in two days. 10 of those pounds were in the first 24 hours. So, you know, um, I'm thinking about eating finally. That's, that's a good thing, right? That's good. But yeah, well, we're glad that you're. You recovered enough to do a show this week? Yeah, I feel good. And, and come out. And I'm looking forward to, once I'm done here, I, I will officially be more than 24 hours past a, f- a fever. So we're going to be, uh, I get to go cuddle with my, my baby boy for a little bit too. So that'll be nice. Well, that's good. Well, let's just go and uh, get into a quick rundown. This will probably be the uh, last show where we could be put t- talking about... Um, I have it being able to touch base on all of the sports that we cover on our on our, our uh, between the two of us, Mike. Yeah. As we got to wrap up the playoffs in the NHL and the NBA, as those wrapped up this Un- week until October, you're saying? Yeah, I- until October. Yeah. When we kind of talk about both sports again, and um, and we got to talk uh, the Cubs. What else we got to talk about, Mike? Rich, we have uh, we have a plethora of racing to talk about. And, uh, you know, Rich, one thing we don't have to talk about this week, we don't have any NFL to talk about. Not really. Yeah, you're right. You know what? But you know what? I, I think I can work in it. I, I can work in an NFL okay. topic. Rich, I think I got one. Rich has a project between now and Quick Hits to get a topic good enough to, to be on the show for the NFL. Uh, all that and more. But, Rich, what's it time to do? Mike, why don't you go ahead and roll the intro? Broadcasting live from somewhere in Iowa, this is Balls and Sticks, the podcast with your hosts, Mike and Rich. And we're back. Okay, Rich, um, with us... With with every show, we have a poll question. This week's poll question, uh, we are in our music stadium jock jams, as we're calling them, series. Uh, we are talking about Sweet Caroline versus Country Road, Take Me Home. Man, um, I do have to say, I love both of these songs. I will admit the reason I voted for the song I voted for uh, mm-hmm. is because of one of my closest friends, uh, Solomon Stroop. Huge Neil Diamond fan. Like, uh, is it Saving Silverman where the three guys are? Yes. Yeah. It is yeah. Saving Silverman. Solomon would be one of those guys. <laughs> like, and I love him to death, but he, he admits it. He is a Neil Diamond fan. Freak. He loves the guy. And I. it's great. Uh, I've learned so much about Neil Diamond. I actually thoroughly appreciate Neil Diamond myself. 
uh, more for having listened to him and uh, listening, spending time with Solomon. Um, legitimately have spent entire road trips, uh, five to, to ten hour road trips in cars with him uh, and listened to nothing but Neil Diamond the entire time. Le- nice. Legitimately nice. have done that. Uh, so I had to vote for Neil Diamond. Okay. I, I did go a Sweet Home Country Roads. Okay. And I, I too like both songs, but I went with I, I went with Sweet Home Country Roads. Um because you're when you're at the stadium and that plays, if you get the entire crowd going with that song, you're singing along to the song and not singing on not adding to the song. When you do Sweet Caroline it's ba ba ba. You're not really singing and so good, so, so good. good. Not that there's anything wrong. Except if you, wrong. if you ever see it in concert, which you'll never get to see because Neil Diamond is retired from concert and it's sad. And I'm really – so legitimately I have to say uh, for – since we were in high school, anytime Neil Diamond was within a three-hour drive, Solomon would be like, you're going with me. And I'm like, I can't afford it. You're going with me. I can't afford it. Uh and then a couple years ago, he announced he was doing a, an, a, a, an American tour. He, he announced he was doing a tour, and he was, uh, and and when he was coming back, he was going to go through Chicago. Well, on that tour, he finally um, decided he, he announced and and was diagnosed with, uh, I believe it was Parkinson's, hmm. and had to retire from, um, from. Uh, from from concerts and uh and it's really sad because i never got to see him and i i never will and that's the super bums me out but uh the the so good so good so good and bop bop bah are actually in some of the uh in some of the recordings of live stuff so adding yeah. yes but not necessarily always adding so i i know so you're getting, but with the Sweet Home Country Roads, you're singing along to make yeah. that song go further, and I'm, I'm still bummed that that I wasn't <laughs> able to be there with you with you at that Bandits game with uh, with you, Danielle, and my wife when uh, a player chose that as his walk up song. Um, that I will admit that was one of the best uh, walk up songs I've ever been a part of. Totally would have loved to have been done it again, but so that's why I went with take me home country roads mike how did the people vote and did we have any comments on the poll give us a <coughs> shout out um uh, so yes and uh the people voted uh eight to um eight to two for sweet caroline um, the we have a like shout out from Chad uh, Mike Mikos and Solomon Stroop, the aforementioned Solomon Stroop, said this will will always be my pick. Hundred percent, it will be. Um, speaking of those that voted for Sweet Caroline, me, Solomon, Jordan uh, Stroop, Greg Sackerson, my wife, Chad Mikos. Ashley Couture and Becky uh, Ramirez. So all right, and who voted? Did anyone vote with me along with for uh, Country Roads? Or yes, was I the lone vote. And, and this is gonna be where uh, I get in a little hot trouble. Okay. I mentioned my mother was coming in town. Mm-hmm. My mom's a huge John Denver fan. She voted with you, Rich. All right. She voted and Mike, Country hear, Road. hearing you talk about uh, uh, Solomon's uh, quest to get to a Neil Diamond concert when, whenever he was within a driving distance, that, that also reminds me of uh, my grandpa Frank. I guess it was a running joke along the family that, well, who's going to be going to the next Neil Diamond concert with him? I went the last time, and so-and-so went the time before that. So supposedly I was I was supposed to be up the next time to uh, take him to the uh, Neil Diamond concert, but I guess uh, that time never came for me as well. So if it would have been in Chicago, would you have gone? 
It would have depends. I think it's when he came to the Quad Cities. Oh, okay. Somebody always had to go with him. Okay. Either my mom, my aunt, my dad, somebody. Somebody well, always went with him. If he would have ended up in the in the Quad Cities, I definitely would have come back for that show. If he would have done Chicago, I probably would have done it. If he would have done Minneapolis, I guarantee Solomon and I would have been at that. But uh, a little too late. So, um, okay, Rich, what is this week's poll question? This week's, we're going to go with whoop. There it is. Against Don't Stop Believing. Two great we'll 80s We'll get that songs. poll up. Yeah, we'll get that poll up probably after we get off of air, as I have it saved as a draft on our Facebook page. Okay. All right, Mike. So um, if you want to vote in that poll, tell the folks where they can find it. Folks, if you are looking to vote in our polls, uh, you can either follow Rich or I on Facebook. We both generally share those out every week. But you can also join our Fans of Balls and Sticks page at Facebook.com slash Fans of Balls and Sticks or our regular page, which is Facebook.com slash Balls and Sticks. Yep, and if you vote in the poll, you're already that means you've seen the poll. Make sure they hit the hit the uh, share button on that as well. Yeah. Get it out to more and more people. All right, Mike, so we, uh, we wrapped up the playoffs, Mike, and both the teams that you were rooting for in the, se- in the series won. So you would have gotten free lunch either way. Mike, by the way, Rich, the Stanley Cup finals went. This is why we don't bet, bet on both of them anymore. We used to, do you remember when you were by, when you owed yeah. me like 16 lunches because I picked like two years in a row and you couldn't, like, and we were doing every one of these? Unfair to you. I mean, just because I'm good at picking, but. Uh, anyway, um, so the Stanley Cup Finals, the Golden Knights won in a solid, decisive victory, four games to one. By the way, did I see it correctly? Nine to two for the final game? Yeah, it, it was a blowout down in Vegas for that game, too. But by the time game five rolled around, some injuries had started piling up for the Panthers. So I, I think even with, before the season start, that series started, I had a feeling the Golden Knights were probably going to be winning that series anyway. I just would have never thought that a 9-2 to two victory in the, close, in the closeout game would have been the final I'm sorry. I apologize, result. folks. I was way off. It was 9-3. to three. Oh, Okay, 9-3. to three. That's still a big gap. So it was the Knights first title in franchise history. Wait, wait. Now come on. Title. Hang on. Hang on. That is accurate, but we do need to caveat that with they've only been a a team for 6 years. Yep. Like we say that like it's a big deal, and it is a big deal. But there's people that live in my neck of the woods that have an NFL team that still hasn't won a Super Bowl in their entire existence as a team. Yep. And the second uh, major championship uh, for the city is Las Vegas as the Las Vegas Aces won the WNBA title last year. Yeah. And uh, who's the owner of the the Knights? Um, I think it's, his name is Foley. Oh, wait, no, 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 no. It was the Nuggets owner. Nuggets owner, sorry. Yeah, it's the Nuggets owner that you're thinking of, yeah. of having multiple championships within the last couple of years with uh, the Kroenke family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Okay. Um, well, no, yeah. Speaking it, of the NBA, yeah. how did that series go? Well, I told you how the, the Stanley Cup did. You tell me how the uh, NBA series did. All right. The NBA Finals. The Denver Nuggets won the series in a gentleman's sweep, as they call it, 4-1. to one. It was their first championship in team history. I think that was a 44-year uh, title-ending drought for the, for the Nuggets. Um, you get a free lunch out of it, and uh, Nikolai Jokic was your finals MVP. Yeah, I mean... Uh, 1967 was when they were founded, Rich. Oh, a little bit. I thought it was 44, they said. Are you looking at their founding as the ABA, as an ABA franchise? Yeah, but the, and that's 50, 56 years. If you want to mm-hmm. go with the... Let's 
49 years. Oh, okay. 49 years, yeah. So, well, yeah. either great way. Title run, great title run by the Nuggets, though, as they yeah. took out a lot of good teams uh, to get this title. And I think, Mike, that they would not – they got to go through a lot to get back there, but they got, the, they got a good core there. And that, that core is not going to be going anywhere to where they could be a title contender next year as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, the fact that they have they they have uh, Nikolai Jokic is already puts them ahead of the curve. So exactly because while everybody else is going small and launching the threes, they can. Denver has a big. That can also go out and shoot the threes yeah. as well. Yeah, it's so it's hard to match up with a team like Denver. <laughs> I do love that he complained that he had to wait around uh, after the season was done to go to the parade because he just wanted to go home and be with his goats and his family, <laughs> like or yeah, horses. I... Horses. Yeah, Horses. I think I saw I saw a similar Facebook post like that where they were talking about his training regimen. He just likes to be at home, be with his horses, and a couple weeks before the season starts, he hopes to be in a good enough shape uh, to be ready for the regular season. You, you also got to love the uh, the other quote that he he was like, Every, nobody nobody believed in the fat man, and the fat man <laughs> won the championship or something like that. I, they, this guy, man, worth his weight right there totally totally so uh what else do we got so yeah i get a free lunch out of it um and and like we were saying uh the denver nuggets owner um josh uh i think it's josh Cronkey is the owner of the nuggets but he is the owner of the nuggets because the nfl does not allow its owners to be controlling owners in other sports franchises. Right. So that's why Stan Kroenke is not the figurehead oh, for for the Denver Nuggets. Uh, he is actually – Stan Kroenke is the owner. Okay. But, like you said, the CEO and president is Josh Kroenke. <clears throat> um so the Kroenke family has gotten a championship out of the Rams, out of the Avalanche, and now the Nuggets. Um, the Nuggets. Yeah. All within the last what th three years? Yeah. I thought they had more on that though too. Uh, maybe not. Yeah, I don't uh, – no, they don't. I thought there was, like, a minor championship. They also own uh, Arsenal uh, Arsenal FC. Wow, I didn't know they owned Arsenal, too. Yeah, they, he's gotten two Stanley Cups out of that, too. Wow. So since 2002. E either way, uh, if you want your team to win the the a championship, apparently you want the Cronkies to buy them. I think the only one left for them would be a baseball team. Yeah, the Cron I don't think the the Cronky family uh, has an interest, has a share of the of the Rockies. Or any baseball team, for that matter. Or at least not yet. Well, speaking of which, you love this? You love this? I do. I do. I like that. Sell the team, Rich. How about the Oakland A's? Sell the team to the Cronky family. Boom. Bring a winning championship to Oakland. Then they'll move. The, I mean, they'll be. Uh, nobody will mind when they move the team to, you know, L.A. or something. Because why don't we be the fifth team in L.A. or whatever? Yeah, and uh, I think Stan Kroenke has more money than uh, more money than John Fisher anyway, and he was the one that built the entire 
built SoFi Stadium with his own on his own dime. Hundred percent, he did. Okay, he could so, be the one that builds the stadium in Oakland. So now that I did that perfect segue uh, into it, let's talk about it. Um, the uh, the, they did a reverse boycott yeah. on um, two days ago for the Rays game against the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. Yep. And the announced attendance, 28,000. And that was the highest attendance since 2019. Rich, their opening day attendance was approximately, for this year, for this year was approximately 8,500. They more than tripled their opening day attendance in a boycott. By the way, uh, the best, I'm sure you've seen the videos, the best videos that I've seen in weeks has got to be watching that, watching that stadium nearly dead silent. Like you can hear, Mm -hmm. you can hear the ball, the, the baseball hitting the glove, like, without even trying and then all of a sudden you hear salva team salva team salva team and they go from dead silent to sell the team chant like that yep yeah I, I read about that they were doing a on the fifth inning they wanted to have a minute of silence or approximately 55 years 55 seconds of silence to honor the 55 years that the that the franchise is called the Oakland home, um, and then they started with the sell the team chant again. Also with that, um, they were giving out sell T-shirts to for fans to wear out in the out in the stands. Um, but and, this is a really and tricky... didn't they have a hard time getting people to leave? Like, didn't the fans like stay there in the stands and not move? as they were trying to get to, like, after the game was over, too? I didn't hear about that. I heard there was some some partying in the parking lots, though. Oh, okay. That went on after the game. Okay. Um, so they were sh- they were trying to show with this reverse boycott that the fans aren't the problem. It's the ownership. That if there's a winning team on the field, the people will show up. As they had a, as the record attendance for baseball, I'm sure with after the remodel, uh, at the Oakland Coliseum was fifty six thousand seven hundred and eighty two. I'm um, so, you no, know, yeah, fifty six three ten. The total capacity, if you include the expanded seats, that they usually tarp off is fifty six seven eighty two. Yeah. And so the record attendance was set for a July twenty first game in twenty eight. Yeah, Rich, here, here's the thing that I, I need to ask you. Okay. Back in 1998, we'll go 98, I believe that was the year. Yeah, in fact, it was. How were the Cubs doing at the time? Not good. Um, I'm actually going to look it up. Maybe it might have been a bad year for me to... Oh, no, that's just... That that can't be. Uh, That was not a bad year for the Cubs, actually. I'm sorry. I gave you the wrong year. But uh, it was 90 and 73. So that's actually a pretty decent year. Let's go 90... We'll go the year before, 97. We had 68 wins. 40, or 90, 94 losses. I'm guessing our average attendance was still in the 30,000s range. And they probably played at least 60% of those games during the day. Yeah. Not even night games. Yeah. So. And you had. Wait, you have to have a winning team in order to. Mm, come on now. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the A's have always been kind of like a tricky team. They're a team that typically 
if they're going to extend one of their homegrown players, it's done on a team friendly deal and or and they always go through the many years of having people on rookie deals and then once it comes time those arbitration years start getting higher and higher that's when those players get traded away yeah so, and that is a big and, problem and you see a lot of those te- and you see a lot of those great young players flourish in other lo- in other places yeah that's a big problem um, and I, I so it's frustrating. Totally to, understand. It's very frustrating to see to see your team going through this every having three great years, having good homegrown talent, and then right when the right when these players are starting to dominate, dominate, and you start hearing about their contract negotiations, that's when they're out the door the next off season. And that's true. And I think that's a problem. But but if you if you can win a championship that way. It's hard to do, but if you can pull off a win that way, do it. They did once. Now you gotta now you gotta start thinking about maybe using different strategy. So um either way, love seeing the fans wanting to support the team, but when the referendum comes around at election time, how did they vote, Rich? It stalled. They either the city voted it down, or the negotiations never got that far to put it to a public referendum. They just got stalled in uh, the California, yeah. with either with the state or at the city level to come come to agreement on how we can get ball, some, not all, but some ballpark funds funds to go towards a new stadium for the A's. And as such, they are the A's are moving to Vegas at this point uh, with a $380 million bump from the state of Nevada. That's just the state of Nevada, by the way. That does not include if Vegas itself decides to pitch some money in. Um, okay, let's go. Um to me, it feels like some hypocrisy on uh, on whether or not uh, on on putting specially. I mean, do you put a section in the Vegas called the uh, the Pete Zone? Come put all your bets in. Is that what you call the the? Uh, <laughs> The, the gambling, the, the book, the sports book in the stadium, you call it the, the Pete zone? Does Pete Rose become an ambassador for the for the Vegas A's? He lives I, in Vegas. I mean, legitimately, folks, I, to me, it just calls out the hypocrisy that is baseball and not letting Pete. Like, I get it. I understand. But the man has more, has... It has more hits than anybody in the league, in the game. So that's to me the biggest problem with with the whole move to Vegas. But it's going to happen. We're going to see it anyway. Okay, what do you got next, Rich? Yeah, I mean, I I, I don't know. I I just one thing that I wonder about the whole situation with Oakland is, will John Fisher if he, he won't stays sell. as the prime as the primary owner of the team. Why would he if sell? If he gets the new stadium, would he, would he, and the fans start showing up? Is there, is there a reason for him to change how he spends on his baseball team? Or here's here's what no no here's the thing, here's here's the best part of Vegas for these guys. Vegas is a destination for fans. You don't go to Vegas for this the sporting event. You go to Vegas because you want to go to Vegas. The sporting event is part is, is a bonus. It's like going to a show at the at the Palm. You don't necessarily go to go see the show at the Palm. You go for everything that Vegas has to offer, and the fact that you get to go see David Copperfield at the Palm or whatever it is. I don't know Wayne Newton. I've okay. never been to Vegas. Britney Spears, 
if you the fact that you get to see one of those people doing their show in Vegas it's the same thing that's what these sporting events are they're just another reason to say okay and it's not and the and it, and it's not going to be fans of the A's the Vegas A's aren't going to have a huge following all of a sudden it's going to be Cubs fans that are in Vegas Brewers fans that are in Vegas. It's going to be those people that show up. You're going to have a lot more out of towners than you're going to have in towners. That's yeah, that's, that's what I'm guessing. Yeah, and that's the one thing I, I'm guessing about too. I think you can make that argument of the oh, it'll be a destination city. I think you can make that argument. That's a good thing to bank on if you're hoping for increased attendance. Yep. For an NFL game like the Raiders, because there's only eight home games. Oh yeah. Eight oh, home yeah. games for an NFL. But you have 82, 82, 81 yep. home games for a baseball 80, stadium. 81. I don't I don't know if the whole banking on visiting fans to boost your attendance. So it's going to be it's going to be a lot good. different. It's not it's not going to be the same as, as like a Vegas or as like a Raiders type situation. It's going to be more of a. Um, it's going to to me. My guess is that it's going to be more of a. Um, it, it's going to be more. Hey, you're in town already. Why not go see this show? Why not? And the killer part's going to be. The tickets are the tickets are going to drop to dirt cheap, and people are just going to go because it's a. Oh well, you're in Vegas. Go see this game. And it, that's what it's going to be. Unlike the NFL games, which you're right. I think the NFL games are more destination reasons. But I, 100% it's going to be, hey, it's 5 o'clock. The game's going to start. You want to go see it? Sure, why not? Yeah, supposedly they've, they've already talked about that they're going to start a lot of their home games at 4 o'clock. At 4 o'clock in the evening or afternoon. So that there's time that after the game you can go out and enjoy the city. So we'll see how it – I'm still curious to see how it all works out. I'm, there's still a part of me that wants to believe that the A's are what? moving. Once you see the uh, – once I see the – where they're going to play after the – I guess once all the dust settles, but when the yeah, governor's I, signature is on the bill it is. and they the, start tearing the down. Signed. The governor did sign now? Yep. So I know it's passed the, the legislature. So it was going to the governor's Yep, desk, no, the governor so. signed. So it's been, it's official. It's just, what's that going to look like? So, uh, But yeah. a lot of stuff happened to them. Too um, bad, though. Too bad so there in Oakland, though. We jumped past the Cubs' week in review. Man, Rich, we did. they did a lot better this week than I thought they would, or you thought they would, as they went 4-1 and one for the week. Rich. Yep, they got W's against the Giants, and they swept the Pittsburgh Pirates, the first place division leading Pittsburgh Pirates. Yep. Thought you never. I don't. I don't know if I'd ever thought I would ever say that on this show. The division the leading division Pittsburgh leading. Pirates. Yeah, that tells you how bad our division is right now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, their loss came against the San Francisco Giants. They yep. couldn't get the couldn't get the sweep out in San Francisco. Nope. Okay, um, Rich, this week they are playing two against uh, the Baltimore Orioles in Chicago. And then they have three more out in Pittsburgh to face those number one Pirates. I'm going to give them three wins. They seem to be on a good they, – they seem to be running really well. They got Cody Bellinger back. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think they can get three wins. So, I'm going to give you my thought process. Okay. I gave them a two and a half. Now, we don't do half games. We, we spoke about that last week. I said their over-under should be about two and a half for the week. The Cubs have been playing terribly this year. Kyle is pitching better. We're seeing the pitching start to get better. But... I'm still going to take the under. So I took okay, the under. And, and, that, and that's fair. That's fair. So, okay. 
Rich, do you see what's coming up next? Uh, Mike, is it uh, is it a left turn? No, it's not. We're actually parked this week because oh. we're heading into the NASCAR parking lot as we have no races. <laughs> Presented by Triple I Sports Cards Incorporated, Moline, Illinois. Check them out for all your sports memorabilia needs, either in person at the store on Fifth Avenue or on their eBay store. Once again, that is Triple I Sports Cards Incorporated. Rich, last week, uh, they were in Sonoma for a road course, um, and your winner was Martin Truex Jr. Rich, your pick of Chris uh, uh, Chris Butcher, Busher uh, took fourth place as my pick of A.J. Allmendinger finished sixth, bringing your total, your win to 12 and 7. Yeah, I, I thought it was a gr- it was a good race overall. Our both of our picks were running in the top ten almost the entire race. Yeah, so um, great I, picks for both of us, really. Yeah, um, and you know what? Uh, it's awesome because um, it it was awesome to watch. It was awesome to see. Uh, both of our guys doing really well, watching them all day. Uh, it was – A.J. Allmendinger had a slight advantage most of the day over uh, Busher, but uh, right towards the end, Busher came through and, and won um, or beat, um, beat, beat Allmendinger. Um, And let me get to the fantasy for Sonoma. Um, I got it up. I got it up, Mike. Um, so for Sonoma, Mike, you won the week with 210 points. I came in second with 201. Dupo came in third with 194. Wolf Bonkow got 183. And Jordan the Supas got 148. Bringing up the rear and putting in a with a partial lineup, was Jeffrey the Stroop with 32 points and Jenna Beans with 20 points. Yeah, um, looks like they they at least tweaked it just enough, uh, and I will get on both of them again to make sure they <laughs> have it in for next week. By the way, again, uh, like we said, there's no racing this week. Next week we're going to be in Nashville, but we'll talk about that a week from today-ish, maybe tomorrow morning, sometime in the next Sometimes, sometime today plus seven, I guess. Yeah. All right, Mike. But on the playoffs, but since it's kind of like an alt, kind of like a break yeah. for, for NASCAR and the NASCAR uh, s- schedule, let's go and take a look at the playoff standings as they stand right now. Yep. Um, so your drivers going from the work on our way from the cut line up are 16 through 14 is Alex Bowman, Bubba Wallace, and Chris Busher. Uh, 13 is Brad Kozlowski. 12 is Ricky Stenhouse Jr. He was automatically in with his win at the Daytona 500. Kevin Harvick is in the number 11 spot. Tyler Reddick is locked in. He's currently 10th right now. Christopher Bell is in the 9th spot. Joey Lugano is 8th. He is locked in because he has won this year. Uh, Denny Hamlin's locked in at number seven. Ross Chastain is six. He has not won a race yet. And your top five who are all locked into the playoffs with at least one win are Kyle Larson, Ryan Blaney, Kyle Busch, Mark Truex Jr., and William Byron. Yeah. Um... Yeah. You're three below the cut line. Daniel Suarez, Ty Gibbs, and Michael Dowell. AJ Allmendinger's in the in at 20, Austin Cindric's at 21, and uh, Chase Elliott, a normal playoff contender every single year due to injuries and a suspension, is sitting 27th in points right now. Um, Mike, anybody below the cut lines you think could could um, could get above it with either a win or consistent high finishes? The the Biggest one you always have to look out for is Chase Elliott. And the other one I think you got to look out for is Austin Dillon. Those two guys 
um, watch out for them. They are always contenders. They are always they always have an opportunity to win a a race. So even though they are both relatively low in the standings, look out for those guys to be the uh, to to mess with the the standings as a as one of them. Will, I I will guarantee one of those two will get a win before playoffs. Uh, somebody else to look for look at as we have other road courses coming up. AJ Allmendinger again is one of those to, to look out for. Yep, you took my guy, Mike, because you got the you got the Chicago Street Race. Yep. Who nobody knows what could what what what's going to happen on that track, and uh, you do have the Indy Road Course in which AJ Allmendinger won last year, even th- but was not playoff eligible since he was not a full time Cup Series driver. Yep. Okay, Rich. With that, let's keep going around in circles as we talk about and let's stay on road courses as we talk about the 24 hours of Le Mans. Uh, Rich, um, your drivers uh, had some early issues and ended up uh, dropping out of the race in the first 10 hours. Um, uh, I ended up watching a good chunk of this. Like we had it on good. much of the day Saturday. We weren't doing much. We were just hanging out at home, being a family, had it on, enjoyed it. And then, uh, Sunday, watched the early parts of it, and then yeah, it was great. So, yeah, your car, uh, your car of choice was the uh, the number four car, the number three car, which came in fourth place, and your race winners was car number fifty one. I'm not even going to try and mispronounce those names. Yeah. So. And uh, interestingly enough, Mike, the, the Garage 56 entry, um, they came in overall, they came in 39th yeah. with that car. And there was like 60, division. there were 60, uh, 60 cars overall. So, you know, I, you can't, I mean... I mean, no, they didn't beat anybody that was. Uh, they didn't beat anybody that was still in the race, but they they put hours in and they did their best. They showed good, and that's the best. That's the most important part. So. All right, all right, Mike. So uh, we'll keep making left hand turns. <laughs> All right, but we're going to be on the dirt as we got to recap. We got to do uh, one more uh, racing horse racing update as yep. uh, we had the Belmont Stakes. Yeah. Uh, all right, Mike. So your pick of National Treasure came in six. My pick of Hit Show came in fourth. And Archangelo was your race winner. Archangelo. Archangelo. Okay. So. Yeah, it was fun. I watched that, too. That was fun. All two minutes of it. So I missed Um, that one. They they have have so much pregame. But the exciting part, Archangelo, uh, his trainer became the first female uh, trainer of a horse to win a Triple Crown event. Yep. Mm Mm-hmm. You didn't find that as interesting as I did. Okay. Mm-hmm. So. Okay. All right. So we'll get we'll get back out to the horse track in May for the Kentucky Derby. Yep. All right. So Mike, I, I said I'd come up with something to get the NFL so we could say that we hit all of the sports. Yep. And uh, I got the um, I came up with uh, the Kansas City Chiefs got their Super Bowl rings. Oh, okay. Uh, last night. Yeah. That's... Last night. That's the thing. And that's the thing. And uh, Delvin Cook, we didn't even discuss this last yeah, week. Yeah. When he when it happened, Delvin Cook was released by the Minnesota Vikings, kind of calling in the question altogether how the NFL is currently valuing the running back position now, because the guy is only 28 years old. Yeah. And they're calling him up washed up or not worth the money that that we're paying him right now. So we're gonna cut him and take the deck. 
take the dead cap heat and go with somebody with fresher legs and Alexander Madison out in minute up in Minnesota. I don't understand this at all. Um, I, I get the history that says the, the recent history that says running backs are short term. They're disposable. They don't get paid a lot. Use them up, get them out of here. That's what recent. Don't be the, don't be the one to lock up a running back and then get, yeah. have your payroll torn tied down to a guy that's not worth it not earning his keep anymore i actually get it from the vikings even more because they because they did that with adrian peterson then they released him they got out of it with his conduct but they were gonna lock him up to a, a deal and he Fortunately for them, got them out of that deal. Which is with his allegations of child abuse. Yeah, but also we're on the on the running back side, you got a uh, Shaquan Barkley. Yeah. And Josh Jacobs not wanting to sign, not haven't signed their franchise player tenders yet. But do you blame them? I mean, here's the thing. You. As a running back, this is your one opportunity to get paid. And there's a good possibility that they franchise tag you, keep you cheap, and then draft your replacement next year. Yep. And that's kind of what the Vikings have done, in a sense, as keeping Alexander Madison around for this long. Yeah, I don't... Uh, for this long and keeping him fresh so that he's ready to take over. I mean, he's had his own injury problems, yep. but at least he's younger. Yep. So... I don't know. It's it's weird, but I don't like it. Rich, good job. You brought up something that we could talk about. Uh, yeah. I think I think running backs should be more valuable. They are the top three. Here's here's the funny thing. The other side though is us as fans look at running backs as way more valuable. Why, Rich? Because they're touching the ball a lot. They, that's who gets you your touchdowns. Yep, fantasy In football. Fantasy football, fans think of running backs as hugely valuable. But I understand in, in the NFL that they really aren't. So, man, I can't wait. It's we, We're only a few weeks away from starting to talk NFL stuff. I mean, fantasy drafts, yeah. you're already getting notified. Fantasy drafts are coming up or, or get your yeah. teams registered. So, folks, it, it might be the downtime of summer. But the downtime of summer is a preview for what the fall has in store. Yeah. So you and, don't want to miss and, anything. And speaking of kind of like the downturn of summer, a lot of a lot of our free agents are signed now. Yep. Except for a couple of people that are out there. And so would would you like to do for the first time ever on our show, would you like to do maybe like a preseason power rankings before training camps have come out? Yeah, let's try that. Because it even if it's just a top 10, bottom five, as yeah. you see it right now. Yep, let's that's see that. It. You don't have to worry about the teams in the middle. Just a top 10, bottom five. Yep. Because I got a feeling we're going to need some content next week with uh, just having baseball and NASCAR Yeah. next week. And not th nothing to review for NASCAR, so. No. Okay. So, look, so we'll have that next week. Mike, do you have any quick hits? Any, uh, nope. Anything else for quick hits or any... And um, no do we shout have outs any... for the show. Do you have any shout outs Nothing. for your week? I do not. Okay, with that, uh, I'd like to wish Joe and Krista uh, a good luck as they are now raising a teenager. Ooh. Yeah. I saw that. Yeah. Good luck with that. I have 12 more years before I have to deal with a teenager, so take lots of notes. Let me know. <laughs> anyway, uh, folks. God bless you. Thank you for joining us this week. Uh, we love having you around. Um, we want to hear from you more. If you want to let us know what you're thinking, jump onto the show anytime. If you join us on Facebook, if you like us, follow us. Uh, sign up for the notifications on Facebook. You'll know when we go live. You can actually interact with the show. We will talk with you if you want to do it that way. If you want to just participate in our poll questions, Rich, where should they go? Uh, look it up on Balls and Sticks, the podcast, or fans of Balls and Sticks, the podcast. Mike, if they're listening to us here on Facebook, 
either live or the recording. Um, but they want to they wanna take us more on the road. Where can they find us? You, folks, you can take us anywhere where you find your podcasts. Uh, Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts, just to name a few, along with iHeart and Amazon. And finally, Rich, tell them where to find us on the final spot. Uh, you can also find us on YouTube. With that, let's roll the outro. Broadcasting live from somewhere in Iowa, this is Balls and Sticks, the podcast, with your hosts, Mike and Rich. <laughs>